Yeah. 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 I'm used to this spot. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to call the uh, April 12th um, Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Um, this is a little out of order. Welcome to the Thursday night version of Tuesday Night Football. Or Tuesday selections. Um, there's a um, couple reasons why we're kind of doing this out of order. Uh, our last meeting was March 27th, um, and um, the next uh, the next meeting after that was going to be April 17th. We're going to have two members that are going to be out of town. The following week is town meeting, and so our next meeting wouldn't have been until May 1st, a full month after we met last time. So we thought it expeditious, given the amount of work that we're going to have, is that we kind of do this meeting um, tonight. Um, April 17th, um, we're going to meet. We're, there's going to be a one-item uh, agenda, which is going to be a, a regularly scheduled um, hearing, an already advertised hearing for the Sunoco station. Um, very short meeting because we're only going to have three members then we get into town meeting and then um, our first full complement will be on May 1st so um, mr. Halsey could not be here tonight he had already a, a scheduled conflict and we, we did call this meeting kind of hastily so um, that's why there's four of us tonight so um, I think we're going to start off with something fun. Um, we have a new member here. Yeah. So, um, and if you notice here, folks in the room and on TV, um, we have the town Bible, and, and Laura Jem is going to perform a time honored ceremony with Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us out of the picture? In the picture? Hey, Justin, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. One with one without. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do it without first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy Squash. Got to be no. no I think we're doing, are we doing it with it? I solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as a member of the Town of Reading Board of Selectmen, according to the best of my ability and understanding, agreeably to the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and to the Charter and Bylaws of the Town of Reading. So help me God. Oh, just a pop. You guys can, why don't you have a, why, why don't you have just, a, have you know what, you'll, you'll, you'll never do this again. So yeah. just see it, uh, do it with the whole family without yes, it. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, no, 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 Everybody, so much fun. Um, so, uh, for those tuning here on RCTV, you may notice there's some changes since the last time we met, and, and just folks I know have been wondering um, how this board's going to operate over the next couple of months. So, um, I just kind of want to lay that out uh, for folks. So, per section 1.1.3 of the selectmen's policies, which we voted on March 27th of this year, which was our last meeting, uh, the vice chair will step in to assume the duties of the chair as may be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, with the chair vacated by the results of the recent municipal election as vice chair, I'm going to assume the duties of the chair, uh, which include calling and presiding over meetings, setting agendas, um, and the other duties laid out in section 1.1.2 of the selectmen's policies. Um, I will be, my title, my, I will be known as the acting chair, and will fulfill this role until the board goes through its formal reorganization, which we've tentatively scheduled for our last meeting in June, as per the policies we voted. 
Um, as secretary, Dan Ensming will now be acting vice chair uh, and assume the role of acting chair if I'm not available. So Dan's going to maybe wear three hats. Acting vice chair, acting chair if I'm not here, and we're still going to have him be, be the secretary. Um, we may or may not choose to fulfill the role of secretary, but we want to wait till we have at least all five members before we do any kind of votes on that. So um, before we sort of kick off the meeting, I, I, I really want to take a moment uh, and say a special thank you to John Arena, who graced this board for two terms. Um, I served with John uh, both here on the Selectmen and on the Finance Committee, um, and he served this town with distinction for many years in a myriad of positions, not just elected, but as a, a volunteer coach and um, many other positions for, for well over 30 years. He has a first-rate first intellect and the ability to synthesize complex issues into digestible nuggets. And you know, many people understand that John and I maybe always didn't agree on certain issues, and that's okay. Um, the best boards are made up of people who have different viewpoints but, but respect each other. Um, I knew that if I was going to debate John, an issue with John, I'd better bring my A game yep. because he made us better um, with his position here. His skill set is going to be is going to be is going to be missed. I can tell you that. We owe him a huge debt of gratitude. Um, whether you agreed with him or not, um, no one should ever doubt his commitment and the love for his, this town. So I wish personally John Arena well and hope that he stays involved. So I, I just wanted to make that known. Um, and while we say goodbye to an old friend, um, we welcome a new member, Vanessa. Um, Besides, um, your biggest accomplishment is that you're significantly bringing down the uh, average age of this board. So uh, for that, we thank you. But you also have a unique perspective that you bring to this board. And um, you have a keen intellect, uh, a firm understanding of the budget from your years um, of service on FinCom, which you did admirably well. And you represent a large segment of people in this town. Folks who give their kids breakfast, drop them off at school, go to the train, go to work, come home, make supper do homework, and then come to the meeting. Um, that's something that this board hasn't had for a really long time, and I think that you're going to really bring that perspective here. Um, but more importantly, um, you listen, you ask questions, and you're open-minded, and that's a valuable skill set. And um, I'm confident that you're going to make us better, too. So welcome. Thank you. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to the voters of Reddit. Um, you underwent a grueling number of months of digesting data, attending community meetings, reading and writing millions of social media posts, uh, and I might add, doing a collective self-reflection about the town that you really want to live in. Um, you came out in record numbers for a municipal election, yep. um, and you decided, basically at the end of the day, to invest in yourselves and invest in the town. And that's something very special. Um, I also want to um, give kudos to the group Yes for Reading. Um, whether you voted yes or you voted no on the override, um, the entire community came out, 43% of our elected voters came out. In a municipal election, we are lucky to get 20. Um, and um, the volunteers of that group, and I, I, did I see Michelle here? Um, she was here. She was here, okay. Well, Michelle Sanfi, Aaron Gaffin, and the whole group uh, did a tremendous job educating this community um, about what would happen with or without the override. And they did something that people on this board could not do. Um, you got into people's homes, into their living rooms, into their schoolhouses, um, and, and talking about that. You engage the community. And an engaged community is a better community. So yes, Reading, you made Reading better too. So I want to make sure we say that. Um, and also, the tenor of this meeting would be a lot different if the vote was different. I mean, we'd be talking about dismantling services in town, a far less fun meeting than what we just had. So what's next? Um, the override consumed our body politic for the better part of two years. Um, many people think, who uh, got involved in, in, in Reading, think that that's all the Board of Selectmen ever does, is do an override. Um, but we know, thank God, that's not the case. Um, and I just want to sort of lay out some things that um, over the next couple of months, um, while I preside, and even you know, going into the summer and fall um, with, a, with, a, you know, with new leadership, these are the things that this board is going to tackle. Um, this is just a short list. This is not the entire list. We're going to meet with the Housing Authority to discuss affordable housing in town. We're going to meet with the Board of Health on the whole pesticide issue. We're going to approve new policies for volunteers. Um, we're going to appoint and reappoint a brand new set of volunteers to boards and commissions, um, and that's going to be done by the end of June. We're going to review and adopt personnel policies. We're going to discuss Oakland Road. 
um, and what that land process is going to look like. Um, we're going to get updates on the North Reading uh, MWRA project. We're going to continue negotiations with Comcast on the new contract. We're going to work with the town manager on goals for next year, undergo his annual review and his salary uh, and his contract, and we're going to figure out the water tower. That's just 10. I have 20 more that I didn't write down. Uh, in other words, we're going to be really busy and we're going to get things done. Uh, but that's what people expect um, and that's what they deserve and they're going to get from this Board of Selectmen. So let's get to work. So tonight's agenda. Um, uh, we're going to do liaison reports, public comment. Um, Bob, you're going to give your report. Um, we're also going to have a proclamation for Arbor Day. Um, we're going to discuss um, you know, reorganization liaison assignments now that Vanessa's here and uh, we want to get her to work right away. We need to discuss that. Uh, Sharon Angstrom, our town accountant, is going to give us our quarterly review. Um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about a default contract amendment. Sharon, you'll talk about that for the town manager. Um, Bob is going to give us uh, sort of sort of what we do is sort of a, a, a check on update of the goals that we've um, from last year. We're going to vote the town meeting warrant and, and we're going to discuss 1.1.7 uh, bought a selectman policy which we just enacted which is for new members given that we have one from this year and one from last year it's a good time and then we're going to do minutes so with that um, I will open it up I guess I'll start uh, I'll start on my right with Dan um, with liaison reports thank you for your kind words uh, for Mr. Arena Ferry um, I got to know John's family really well during the campaign, and I really want to salute them, especially his daughter Claire, who poured her heart into this campaign. One of the fondest young women I have ever met in my life. Uh, worked tirelessly with two small children. Uh, his wife Lynn, who stood by his side, and uh, many, many others. But I want to congratulate you, Vanessa. I'm pleased we were able to meet already. and. Just leave you with the admonition that, that to whom much is given, much is expected. And with that, I'll give my liaison report. I have two items. Uh, first is the cable negotiation team meeting. This is a, a group of, I'll, I'll just briefly go over the membership. Uh, Matt Cronellis and Jane Miller from the town administration. Kevin Farilla, uh, town IT, myself as a selectman representative. Uh, John Doherty and Gail Dowd from school. Uh, Julian Carr from School IT, Jake McAleer from R RCTV, and also Phil Rushworth from RCTV, and Eric Russell, who is the town council uh, designee. Uh, the two key dates are that uh, Comcast's current license expires 11-23-18, and Verizon's expires 1-25-21. We initially had discussed uh, having joint negotiations with Verizon and Comcast. We learned that Verizon is only doing five-year contracts and don't like to start talking until the year before the contract's up, so that's kind of out. And it looks like this will just be a negotiation with Comcast as a result. Um, we uh, have a draft proposal from Comcast, which Town Council has gone over and compared to the current language. Uh, some, some things were noted and will be the subject of future discussions. We also have a, a pick list of things we're going to be asking for. Uh, one of the principal requests will be that as many of the local these uh, RCTV public access stations be in high def as possible. Uh, I know all, all three, <laughs> and, and have a uh, select a selection uh, to record programs, much like you see with uh, uh, your uh, your guide for, for normal cable, for cable TV. Uh, so that process is going forward. We will probably have one or two more internal meetings, and then bring Comcast in. Uh, so I think that sums that up. Any, any questions from the board on that? Thanks. We just um, tell me the key dates again. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Comcast contract expires 11-23-18. Uh, they, they would more than likely be willing to extend that if we, we get up tight to the deadline that's mm -hmm. been done before. Verizon is 1-25-21. Yeah. Yeah, didn't we have, we had, did we work with a consultant? I think? Yes. Yeah, I remember yeah, going to a meeting, and, and, and so are they going to stay involved? Or is uh, it just, um, to some degree, yeah. I, I think she may be a facilitator in the negotiation process. She uh, she did the whole uh, interrogation of the town, holding open meetings right. and uh, getting people's wishes. Uh, she's very good at that. Okay. Uh, I think she will continue her involvement. So, second item, the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department Subcommittee on the Payment to the Town of Reading met last evening. Uh, in your packet for uh, next 
Tuesday. You'll see the briefing that uh, the general manager gave to the board with a proposal at the end of it. Uh, and oh, is that it, the thing Caitlin sent us? Yeah, it, it is. That yeah. ain't open it, yet. Right. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, well, the, uh, the RMLD has kicked this around in a couple meetings, and last night uh, we had another discussion about it. Uh, ex concern has been expressed from RMLD management and the board itself about uh, a trend of uh, diminishing kilowatt hour decreases and, and sale decreases as a result. Uh, they also are facing, and, and this is real, uh, I've looked at their, their capital uh, plan, uh, they have a lot of capital rebuilding to do because some of it was allowed to slide during the current, the, the past term, the past uh, general manager. What they are suggesting be done is that a, a, a consultant be brought in to study the near term and long term likelihood of uh, kilowatt hour sales under different scenarios, different growth scenarios in the different towns. And uh, in the meantime, continue on the current CPI basis. We expect that study can be done in six to eight months. Uh, RMLD will fully fund that study. And then uh, they will or will not go forward with the plan as presented. Um, so that's, that's where we stand right now. That's probably what I'll be reporting to town meeting. Okay. So, um, yeah. right, so I was going to ask, so, you, so you'll make a report to town meeting? I plan to, You yeah. have to because... Monday night, I think it's scheduled. Yeah. Yeah, it's on, on the docket here. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Just one thing oh. on that. Um, I was at the uh, finance committee meeting last night, so I couldn't join Dan. Um, the numbers are final for last year. It's about a two and a half percent increase by the current contract, just so you know, a two and a half percent increase. Oh, okay. Is that more? That, 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 that's the highest number in, I don't know, five well, or six years. Well, that's because it tracks CPI. Yep. Boston, Brock, and Nashua CPI. Right. What do you know? So, I mean, that's, so now in, 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 your, in the budget for 19, did you budget on two and a half or did you? Do you remember? I think so. That's I think our default is two and a half. So, so that sets the November payment. It's like a November yes. to November, right? Correct. Um, November of eighteen. When do they usually pay? It's they after pay, July, they, but do they pay in two installments. I really don't know. I think they pay. I want to say they pay like three months into the year and then three months before the end of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and two equals. So, so, it, so it, you know, without a different contract or a different arrangement, that would be the payments, which is the okay. same okay. as the budget. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, well, I don't have liaison reports, um, but I did have something brief I wanted to say. Um, first, I'd like to thank John Arena for his service. Um, we share love for this community, and I appreciate the time he's so generously given. Um, I'm honored to serve on the Board of Selectmen uh, and to follow the many women and men who have served before me. I look forward to working with the other members of the Board. Um, as well as our uh, dedicated town staff and our many wonderful volunteers um, to serve the town of Reading. Um, it means a lot to me to have uh, my family and friends here uh, for my very first meeting, and I want to thank everyone both here and at home uh, for your support. So, thank you. Thanks. Andrew? Thanks, Barry. Um, just uh, a couple of opening thoughts. First of all, welcome, Vanessa. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be a pleasure working with you. Um, and I wanted to say um, to the people of, of Reading, we, you know, we have an override now, and <clears throat> I, you know, I'm sure the other board members as well will commit to try to provide you more information on how the town money is spent, and um, whenever, I think we should always be looking at uh, cost-saving opportunities as things move forward so we can make this override um, which many people did not vote for, um, but for everyone, uh, we want to be looking forward. We want to look at uh, cost savings in the future to make this override last for as long as possible. So I, I, I'll be committed to that. Um, so, and I, I, I just wanted to um, say I'm not the. Uh, liaison of the library, but I did go to, the, I went, I'm trying to add, put a plug in for the library. Uh, we have a great library in town, and I just picked up a book, a book about uh, Anasazi stories from West Africa. So uh, a little pitch for, uh, and, 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 and I'll confess right now, it's a children's book. I didn't know it was a children's book. <laughs> I went to pick it up, but it still looks good. Um, so um, the, the Reading Housing Authority um, 
uh, a member of the Red Reading Ho Housing Authorities here tonight. Uh, we discussed a, a sort of a, an emergent issue uh, that the board might, it's one of these uh, within 48 hours, not reasonably yeah. expected. Um, so I'd like to give some time to Tim Kelly, if we could. Um, and. So that's that. The Trails Committee met last night. I have not had a chance to catch up to them um, and find out what they're doing. Um, but I have spoken to the Reading Climate Advisory Committee, which also met last night. And um, David, do you want to give the update or do you want to, you're here in the room. It's, it's uh, I can, I guess. Yeah, I mean, just stand up. Um, well, in fact, that's, uh, maybe I could. But say name. David Zeke, uh, 163 Pearl, the chair of the Climate Advisory Committee. Uh, the main thing that we're working on right at the moment is the upcoming Earth Day Fair, and I want to invite all of you to attend the Earth Day Fair. That's going to be uh, April 21st uh, at, Mid at Parker Middle School, 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we've got, uh, this is the 10th one of these annual uh, Earth Day Fairs, and uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting fair this year. We have some of the usual items like electric cars, yeah. solar, or suppliers and so forth but we're also adding this year a uh, uh, little more focus on uh, things like um, the planting what plants uh, are, are natural for, for our area and trees how to, how to, how to you know keep trees rather than cut them all down and so forth so there's going to be a little more focus in that area that that's that's the main thing we're worrying about getting exhibitors lined up in the, in the publicity and so forth we hope to see you there um, we're also working on the um, the, the bike exchange uh, with Reading Cares, we, we co-sponsor the bike exchange at RMLD, where you can bring a bike, get a new bike, uh, you know, you know, get get rid of one you don't want. If you if you want a new one, you can you can come and, and get a new one. If you don't have a bike, you can come and get a bike. Uh, there were last year, um, I believe we, they had uh, this, this same event, uh, handled uh, 100 bicycles and placed 80. So I mean, it's, it's a great annual thing for, the, for this uh, group. Also, we are working with uh, town staff on the implementation of plastic bag bylaw. Uh, so how, and the main focus of that will be communication, both to residents and to businesses, of what's expected and how it will, how it will play out in the timeline. Dave, when does that take effect, supposedly? Well, the, the, uh, six, it, it's, it's in effect now as of the, um, the approval of the, the Attorney General, which was about March 10th. There's a six month period of where the businesses can adjust, you know, to get rid of their, their inventory of, of the thin film bags and, and move over to the new one. So basically, the, the real effect, the real effective date is more September 10th. Okay. And um, that's it. So thank you, thank you, David, for all the hard work you do. I, I was remiss at not thanking all of the candidates who participated in this April uh, 3rd election. I think it's great that we have so many uh, people willing to step up and and go for politically elective office. It is not an easy thing to do, and um, I have the, the utmost respect and gratitude for everyone who who ran uh, on on April fifth. And and um, obviously, some of us don't cook dinner and have it here. And <laughs> well, get on the stick. Thank you, Bear. <laughs> no worries. Pointing that out. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to open it up now for public comment, uh, Mr. Brown. Bill Brown, uh, 28 Cotton Road. Uh, I got some information for you. I don't know what could get different. Um, I think there's a snag in the override. I don't believe that the way that the override went through for the school department can be implemented. If you go on, and I've got it down here. Um, if you look at, I'll, I'll let you hand around. 5921C, it says thus while the uh, additional dollars are still part of the community's general uh, unrestricted revenues and not a separate bill, uh, funding source for the purpose of making appropriations. These dollars are considered earmarked because they cannot be raised in a tax levy unless the community appropriates them for the purpose stated in the question. And states up above. Classroom teachers, one million something. Learning uh, support, 800,000. And athletics, 
If you go down below under 7134, we cannot do that. Yeah, uh, under uh, 7134, Bill, uh, they refer to the appropriating body. That's town meeting. That is correct. And how, how does town meeting appropriate the school funds? In one lump sum. So what's your point? It here is, if you look at what it says here in use of additional funding, uh, taxing authority, you have to go the way it's on, on the ballot, and the ballot says, three separate findings. If right. you read this, we have to vote it in one lump sum. I don't believe you can do that. I think it's contrary to one or the other. Bob? Um, thanks. Bill and I uh, had a similar discussion last night yes, at the Finance right. Committee. Um, and um, Bill's had this discussion in the past uh, verbally, and I passed along to town council. He's given an opinion. But Bill shared this document with me last night, and I, I said I would pass along to town council, which I did this morning, right. and ask for a written opinion, which he's given in your packet before about the verbal comments, right. uh, just to make sure he's tying things up in a knot. Okay. And previously to Bill's uh, um, you know, verbal remarks, town council said it was fine, but we'll see what he says. Okay. We'll make well, sure that that's a hand up for town meeting. Okay. And well, obviously you know. there's nothing we're gonna do, and I mean, right. the vote is done, the will of the people have yeah. spoken. Yeah, and, and just to be clear um, Bill's um, sort of technical issue is not that the override wasn't done properly right. it's what follows That's just right. to be clear oh, right. okay. Okay. duly noted <coughs> um, any other public comment uh, the other oh. thing that Mr. Chairman and Mike uh, Vanessa your number eight on the number of female selections yes. that have been since 1930 wow thank you Bob remind me of one other I forgot about yeah, I can name six of them. Yeah. Eight with a bullet. <laughs> okay. Um, but Mr. Kelly, you had your hand up first. Uh, Tim Kelly, uh, 84 Woman Street. Um, uh, I'm here uh, from the Housing Authority. We have an issue um, that I wanted to bring uh, up to you regarding um, <clears throat> there's a whole, there's an affordable so-called affordable home ownership program yeah, up at Gazebo Circle. Um, so <clears throat> that we uh, monitor the Housing Authority. It was created in the 90s, uh, shortly before I got on the Housing Authority. Uh, and there's a deed rider on it. We recently had a couple uh, staff from the town uh, come to our um, to our meeting to, to talk about it. We have a per so when when this property turns over uh, the deed rider, which is very unique, it ties in the affordable discount to market uh, the market rate. So it's a twenty percent discount off the market rate. And from the beginning, when this um, program, um, you know, a after it initially started, it was very difficult to get people who were. Um, who qualified for the affordability part under the guidelines income to be able to purchase the property because the, it was appreciating so much. So that's the problem we have as as people who are have sold um, want to uh, you know uh, turn it over. There are a couple other options if we can't if there isn't an affordable buyer that's option one. Uh, option two, the, the housing authority has an option to purchase the property at the uh, discount price and the third option if we don't exercise that <clears throat> would be to be sold at market uh, rate and uh, the proceed the anything additional to whatever the discount price is and there's some um, question about what that would be but basically the 80 percent price what's over would come go to the housing authority as um, for affordable housing so uh, um, now uh, the reason why I'm coming is uh, we want to make a request for some funds from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So that's a separate uh, thing. It's not tied to that. But uh, in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, for any of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, is a joint vote of all the selectmen and all the Housing Authority board members. So um, what was presented to us by staff, and there was a consultant, I think, too, there is that um, we, 
if if we're able to uh, put a new rider on this, and that would have to, we can't change it for the person who, there's one person now who's selling, which is the reason why I'm coming. Right. So um, what we would propose is that um, that there would be, that we take a vote to take funds from the, Ford, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund to uh, basically cut the difference so that either the housing authority would purchase the property with some assistance from the, uh, you know, so we would put in basically the affordable amount, which is about 200, 205,000 according to the consultant. And then the additional amount, which may be, I don't know what the amount is, because we really are, you know, have to figure out that the person has to, they have to get an appraisal. So we're not, we haven't agreed upon or set that price, but it could be $70,000 um, or give or take, you know, really, it, depending on when the appraisal comes in. Uh, we did have a market analysis. Um, so. I don't have any specific numbers, and I don't really want to get into the uh, you know, the you know the negotiation part because we are going to have to negotiate with her about that. Um, is but to put that forward to so that we can uh, entertain scheduling or getting together to uh, consider uh, getting funds from the trust fund for that purpose. Now, the other thing that I want to say about that is that those units, I'm not sure how many right now are in that affordable uh, program, but none of them are counted on the state's um, uh, SHI, the, the inventory. Really? If we, well, well, if, well, that just, well, why not? I mean, those are deed restricted units that, it does, it, that, that are deemed affordable. Why? I mean, we're killing ourselves trying to get right. these affordable units and trying to make projects, you know, fit neighborhoods. Why are we losing units, and why are the ones that we have not counted? I mean, that's uh, that, that's the part I, I need to wrap my arms around. Um, that the, the DHCD counts those units. Um, when this was set up, it was never counted. It was never set up. And I think it, in large part because it's tied into the market rate, so it's not truly affordable for, um, for people. I don't know, I don't know the answer to it, you know. So now, if we were to, uh, so our proposal would be uh, that we get some funds from, from the, the trust fund to then we could purchase it and then sell it to somebody for affordable. We put a new rider on it uh, that would be a, the state lip rider, and then it would be it, then it would be one unit that could be counted. That unit would be on on the, the inventory. Um, if if we can't do if we can't do that, you know if we're not gonna if that doesn't make sense, you know, and that's uh, something that uh, you know the voters for that don't don't think that that's something that we should do then. It will be, um, you know, most likely sold at market rate, and the res the, the, the restriction that's on it now will will be, uh, you know, eventually have to be will be released. And even though it's not counted affordable, it's not affordable in the in the sense that it's counted. It would the, the it would probably not be able to stay. Uh, you know, the, the program will go away right for that unit. So this is just informational, Tim, tonight, and the Housing Authority will be submitting a formal proposal to the board. Is that what yeah? I'm we can do that. I mean, I we had just discussed it this week because the the uh, the owner um, has you know has notified us officially that yep. she wants to invoke this. So now there is a you know there's a time you know there's a hey, do you know what the time frame with that basically where you where the Housing Authority have to basically invoke its right of first refusal, like, you know, to buy it. It, um, isn't that what's in the rider? Is yeah, it, you know, is it like I, 90 I don't days, know. 60 I, days, 30 days? Yeah, it's it's got to be at least 30 days. It's it's yeah. it's probably the, that time frame. I, I'm not sure yeah. offhand, um, but uh, but I did want to. I had called Andy as our liaison to let him know, and then he suggested I come. So okay. rather than have some, you know, rather than put the proposal, you know, wait to put a proposal, I just wanted to, you know, put it out there because now we do have somebody who's now saying, okay, fine, we told you what I want to sell it now. You know, let me know what you want to do. Um, yeah, just two points. Um, warrant Article 12 for the annual town meeting um, needs to reapprove the uh, housing trust fund allocation plan. So if you do it before June, then you're all set anyways. But there's a balance of 266 odd thousand in it, just so you know. Um, and secondly, Tim, 
um, tentatively, there's a May 1st selectmen's meeting with affordable housing as mm -hmm. a topic. That's a, yeah. So that's if that's convenient for the mm -hmm. housing authority, that would be ideal. There's already um, a couple of guest speaker and staff planning to come in on related topics, but not certainly to know about this one. Yeah. So if that date works, and if uh, it doesn't, um, we could probably move that to a later meeting in May. I think it's the 15th. It's the next. Yeah, I can I can check with everybody yeah. about that. And, okay. But you know, if we if we tentatively say that that would be a, a date to address this, yeah. that okay. that probably be a good idea. Yeah, I, I would encourage the May first because if there's a if there's a click a, click, a ticking clock, yeah. where basically we have to you know we could potentially lose this unit. I don't want to wait for us to meet. I mean, that, that may or may not be the right solution. I don't know enough information yet, but at least we should get it on the agenda earlier rather than later. Just um, so, yeah. Bob, May for that, that, that's actually that is the yeah. only that's the first meeting where all five of us are going to be and, here and today. They uh, public services requested two uh, items: the um, uh, board of health issue as and this. Review on right. May first. So maybe we'll so. put that on. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have we'll have more info because you know she she has an attorney. I spoke yeah. with him and and I think the appraisal was done yesterday. So okay. once we get the appraisal, you know we got it on market analysis. Once we get the appraisal, then the clock starts ticking. So, um, so yeah, I think that sounds like it. That would be a work. Tim, one last one last thing um, in preparation for May first. Um, would you be able to come to that meeting and let us know how many other ticking time bombs there yeah. are on these that, you know, if we spent $200,000 to get an affordable unit and now it depletes the fund and now there's 10 people who want to sell? You know, it would be great to kind of yeah, figure out a long term plan. The how, but yeah, we'll, yeah, like, how many of those that they may be out there that might we can have, have that the same info. Plan. And uh, we'll have more info than just me, you know. No, I know. Get that, that this. We can put something together um, and we'll certainly get that over to uh, mm -hmm. to the town before that. Will you include complete documentation on the current restrictions or covenants on that property and what the, what the agreement was? Yeah, well, it's just a, the deed rider, and I, yeah, certainly. The deed rider, yeah. That, yeah. I'd like to see that. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Okay. All right. Um, All right, thank you. Sorry, Cadence. Hi, good evening. Cadence Thomas is uh, Arlington Street. Um, I spoke at the last uh, board meeting of this board, and I did fail to submit uh, documentation regarding the 120 day violation notice issued to Matthew Zucker, developer of the project that is still being referred to as Reading Village. Um, at that meeting, in response to my statements, Mr. Zucker uh, denied uh, that the site is designated as a mass DEP uh, waste site. Um, this notification documentation can serve to you as proof that the site is in fact a waste site with hazardous materials, both arsenic and lead, found in soil exceeding allowable levels. Uh, this notification of responsibility was issued to Mr. Zucker uh, for having failed to comply with DEP regulations that require him as the owner of the property to follow the next steps um, towards remediation to be taken within 120 days of the transfer of the deed to the new owner. Um, the deed was transferred on June 15, 2017, hmm. and today marks the, the 301st day since Mr. Zucker um, and his company took ownership of the property and thus uh, became responsible for complying with the Mass DEP's 120-day requirement. Uh, for waste site management. Uh, this is just one area in which Mr. Zucker has fallen short of the law, regulations, and agreements with state agencies and municipal departments. As of today, the developer has yet to post his demo per permits or subsequent building permits that will come uh, for public display on, on the property. Typically, there would be a bulletin board on the development site where the public can gain pertinent information um, as postings um, are required on other permitted projects in town. Uh, this is of concern to me because we are awaiting the filing of the release abatement measure. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about that as a RAM, um, which the Mass DEP is requiring of the developer before he moves dirt on the site. I believe they may start to move dirt on the site tomorrow. Um, they've gotten down below the foundation, so we're very close to that. Um, at the last meeting uh, of this board, in response to my statements, the chairman asked the town manager what jurisdiction the town had over the project at this point. The town manager stated none and then amended his statement saying that if there was a health uh, concern, the health board might, um, the health department might have some oversight. I believe that the town's building department and the health department have roles and oversight responsibilities. And while um, I have made infrequent calls to town hall, when I have called, I have received confusing responses and lack of answers. 
Um, I understand these matters might be addressed primarily through the ombudsman and speaking with the town manager directly, and I will pursue those channels uh, for the time being, um, but I wanted to let you know that. Uh, the town, landowners and developers, and neighborhood organizations would be right to show interest in this particular project, as, the, as the, the way the town handles matters on this one is a good indication of the environment that they can expect going forward. It is my hope that the town will participate in areas for which it holds regulatory responsibilities so that residents and developers can have confidence that Reading is a safe and respectful town to both live and operate in. Thank you. Well, um, I would have to do some research to know some what has happened since the last meeting, but Mr. Zucker said he would have a neighborhood meeting. Has that happened? Uh, the, he, the developer, the construction company had a meeting. Okay. Um, and notified the, t the, and the town wasn't there, so it was right. rather incomplete. Um, there was we wouldn't normally attend a neighborhood meeting, though. I mean, we weren't notified, but we wouldn't normally attend. Yeah, okay. Um, all I know, and again, I'm not sure if I'm talking apples and you're talking oranges, but um, before your last appearance at the board, I had asked the fire department to look into the uh, issue of toxicity, I'll just say broadly. Um, they contacted Mass DEP, and I have an email from them. I don't want to characterize it. I'm not an expert. Um, but after reading it, I was not concerned, I'll just say. Um, so that may not line up with what you're saying and I, I'd be happy to share that email with the board um, mr. chair uh, so f first of all I want to get conflict of interest issues out of the way I work for the mass DEP um, I cannot work at the mass DEP on sites in Reading because that would be an appearance of conflict of interest but this state encourages DEP state employees to um, provide their expertise sure. on um, environmental issues in, in my case um, I'm f I, I, I think that um, what you stated is correct they, they're gonna um, <clears throat> if it's a hazardous waste site <clears throat> they and before they start moving soils around um, they, they um, I, I believe should come up with uh, our RIM uh, um, proposal so that just to make sure that none of the contaminated soils are moved from here to there and um, and what have you. So um, I, I'm glad that you called the state. I'm glad they were able to help. Um, yeah. So if uh, Andy, if I could, um, I'll forward you the email from Captain mm -hmm. Nelson, and I, you read it a lot more intelligently than I will. Sure, sure. Then it'll be fine. And if you have an issue, please let me know. Yeah. Bob, is this something that we could have the Board of Health look at? I mean, you know, there's a report that says yeah, there's course. stuff there. Um, the developer says, no. I mean, if they're supposed to hit certain guidelines, I mean, um, I don't, haven't, does that I mean? mean I, don't, that? I don't see any reason at all we couldn't have our Board of Health look at it. What, uh, what could happen, I can't say. I don't know. It depends on what the state has told us. They'd look at the documents, and I don't think we'd yeah. do a soil sample, but they'd look at the documents. But again, Mass DEP has satisfied us as staff, so I don't know where the conflict or disagreement is. Our health agent has training in soil samples. Yes. Okay. Well, um, DEP's um, triggers to come into the system, and what you have to do once you're in the system, um, it, it, it is not, at least when I was on board, what the health agent did. They, they do things like rat uh, in, in th things and, and inspect restaurants. But they typically don't handle DP hazardous waste sites. Um, and, and, and I don't know if they have the training to do okay. human health risk assessments and all that. So I, I'd be happy to take a, take a look okay, at it. Thanks. Vanessa? For those of us that are new to this procedure, what is the general process as far as when this report came out, who conducted it, who keeps an eye on the developer? Because there's, I don't believe this is the first time we've had issues with this particular site. So who is ultimately responsible for overseeing that they are following proper procedure? It's the building inspector, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll speak to this project and it, you know every project's a little different um, for this one there's many different steps one of the most early steps 
was uh, involving only the state for asbestos removal for windows, windows, maybe windows and doors. Um, they fail to tell us anything. Technically, they don't have to because they're only dealing with the state, but as a good neighbor, they should have. So that was one of the days we shut them down because we didn't know what they were doing. And it looked like they were doing demolition and they did not have a permit for that. And I think that was on a Friday, as I recall. Um, so again, if they didn't communicate well, they didn't do anything technically wrong. Once that was all abated, and I believe it has been, I've seen letters to that effect, uh, then they deal with the town formally. So then they would apply for a demolition permit, which they did. And uh, as, as was stated at the last meeting with the developer in attendance, uh, their communication has not been a strong suit the whole time, for years. Um, we do the best we can. We share knowledge when we have it. We just don't have a lot. You know, neighbors are asking us for updates, and the neighbors almost always know more than we do. Um, it, it's largely up to the nature of the developer and the uh, um, developers that are going to continue to redevelop in Reading, we have generally very good relationships with. Uh, the developer that worked on uh, Oak Tree down on Haven Street was an in and out developer, never going to see him again. It seems like this one might be too. That's a lot harder for the town to wrap their arms around and get good behavior out of. So we have certain regulatory roles, but really this boils down to common sense and communication, and that's tough. So the building inspector has legal authority, but he can't make them communicate better. Yep. Um, if he's not following, if they're not following certain uh, requirements of communication with the neighbors, he can shut them down and has. When they start doing things without properly notifying the neighborhood, um, but if you've reached that point, you have a difficult relationship. Well, it certainly seems like we're at that point. What is the process? I, I don't know that we are. I, I want Andy to see uh, the information we have, honestly. Um, I, I was not aware as of since the last meeting there were any problems. I knew there was a meeting with the neighbors, and I had not actually heard any negative things since then. But It's not just the 120-day violation. There were also, the, the DEP had to come back in and do a secondary check for buildings for asbestos. That in, first, that first go round that happened actually weeks. on a Saturday in February was, was though they passed papers to the town that, that claimed that, that asbestos remediation was complete, it, the DEP later came in and found that it was not. Today, there were even Do you know a time frame on that when? Not on, not on Okay, that. we'll, we'll catch up. Call but me anytime. I mean, dust remediation uh, today was even an issue, and, so, and a call to the building department seems to be a great stress to them, and that they don't have, really have resources to babysit on a, on a daily basis, and yet there yep. are, there are, there is a lack of respect for the, for the agreements, not just dust, but aspects of the traffic and safety agreement that the police department made with, with the, the developer that they are continuing to okay. ignore. Um, certainly, 24-7, uh, the police is always a good first point of contact. They have certain laws they also have to follow, so they can't just shut someone down without contacting the building inspector, the assistant town manager, and myself. And of all of those, I, f I know far than the least. <laughs> Um, but if they are not following um, public safety and public health rules, they absolutely will be closed. And we've done that once. We hate to do that, but we did it. So communication is the key. Um, you know, email's best. Uh, as you can imagine, the building inspectors are in and out of this building all day long. It's very difficult to catch up to one on the phone. I can't. So email to me is the best avenue, and I'll make sure it gets to the right place. Well, I just, I just want to say, I mean, it, 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 this is going to be a, a continuation. Um, I, I would just urge you to, you know, sit with the inspectors, you know, gene, wh whoever it is, and just, I, I know we're stretched thin. I mean, it, it, we're doing a million, we're going 100 miles an hour. Um, but if this is, you know, if Cadence or the group comes in every week and there's stuff that's just not happening or happening badly, yeah. you know, we just have to dedicate some resources to it. And, and I, I, I agree, and I, I'm just saying I, I wasn't aware of any issues since the last selectman's meeting and the neighborhood meeting. Um, that doesn't mean other staff weren't aware of it. I just hadn't heard. Okay. So I'll talk to them next week. Cadence, is there an organization, uh, has the neighborhood arranged... Um, any kind of communication structure? Are you the designated communicator for your 
neck of the woods. We have at least half of the amazing um, uh, Lakeview Eaton uh, organization. Uh, <laughs> in the house. So I, 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 I can't say we have anything even remotely close to um, that uh, team. Um, and we're doing what we can. It's a, it's a very, it's a actually a very different kind of neighborhood than that project. Um, there are far more renters, and it's a, it's a fairly transitional neighborhood. There are some old families, but there are many new buyers coming in to downtown who are transit focused. They are train yep. commuters and not necessarily quite as invested or knowledgeable about what's going on in town. So. There, there isn't the force of organization, and now we're, we're about two years in, and we don't quite have that same, the same thrust that other projects. Well, well, you're the eyes and ears. I mean, obviously, you're going to know what's going on before us. Um, but you know, it's not your job to police it. It's it, it, it's ours. So, um, or the stakes if it's a asbestos, asbestos thing. So, as Bob said, just you know, I, I, just because they don't answer the phone on the first ring or they're out, just keep putting it on record, and, and you know, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you very much. Uh, hey. Any? Uh, I'm sorry. Barry, just two very brief points on that. W one, um, when you have a hazardous waste site like that, you you want to characterize where other releases of oil or hazardous material have occurred before you start digging so that um, you take the proper safety precautions. Um, and, I, and I drove by today at lunch and there was a lot of digging going on. So that's something we'll want to follow up on. And, and, and to a broader, uh, a broader question is um, we have a lot of these developments are coming online more and more. Is there a way that the board could yeah, help? Yeah, we're going to address that when we, when, we, when we talk about liaison. I have a oh, proposal okay. I want okay. to do. So okay. I just want to kind of move, move this along a little bit. So Great. Um, any other, not to shut off any comment, but any other public comment? Okay, hearing none. Uh, what's next? Um, we do Bob. Oh, oh, Bob. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on behalf of Dr. Doherty and myself and uh, all of the municipal and school employees, another big thank you to the voters. Um, John and I were talking the day after, and um, for the first time in well over 10 years, we didn't really know how to do our financial aspects of our jobs anymore. We had to spend money. It's not been a problem for a long, long time. So I know Mr. Brown is still here. I'll echo Andy's words and what John and I said. Um, Prop two and a half has not been repealed. It is still in place. That's right. We have just raised the sea level back to acceptable levels, let's say. Um, we have to continue to operate the same way we have for the last 10 or more years. No idea, it's, there's, there's no option not to do that. But in order to get the sea level higher, John and I have to learn to sort of relax a little and think a little differently. Um, but thank you to, to the yes group and to all the voters, both yes and no. Um, I have to tell you, I was really pleased um, that a number of no voters over the last month had, that had talked to me um, were very satisfied with the outcome that the people had spoken and that the town had explained itself extremely well and they did recognize that uh, the, the, the time that had passed since the over, last override was very long and we must be doing one or two things right. Um, the second thing is an announcement with a slight amendment from information I had yesterday. Um, the school department, possibly school committee, is going to host on May 23rd, which is a Wednesday, at 6 p.m. I may have said last night 7 p.m. at FinCom. Uh, 6 p.m. May 23rd in the Scatini Library at the high school, a school security summit. Um, the exact agenda is to be addressed. Um, I'm discussing this with other area managers that have done such meetings. Um, but the uh, superintendent, the facilities director, the police chief, and myself um, are the four key people that have worked on school security. Obviously, there's a lot of other staff involved behind that. But we are the four, that, the only four that have complete reports, very much protected under Homeland Security, about the uh, capital project that we're working on and that is in the capital plan but not funded for public building security. And um, all the elected boards and the finance committee had an executive session on this last fall. Um, quite honestly, I, I don't know if the minutes of such a meeting and, and future meetings will ever be released because of the security issues that are discussed. Um, but I do want to assure the community it's, it's something we are, are highly aware of, work a great deal on. 
um, and we, we realize that the community needs to know some basic things that we take for granted that we know. And I think the community will feel um, much more well informed after they hear um, what, what can be said. Um, when we had our most recent meeting yesterday in, in John's office, I started off the meeting by saying, I know this most of the things we can't say. Let's just forget all that. What can we say? And um, you know, what we can say is something like 2 to 5% of what we know. And that's just it. That's just the facts. Um, but I think that 2 to 5% will be very valuable. Um, I know that uh, we've learned in the last um, few months uh, that a lot of parents are new to the town, new to the district, and we're not aware, especially if they didn't have older kids at the high school, of all the different Alice drills and training and the joint training that our police and fire and dispatch and now school personnel do together. Um, so I, I would highly encourage uh, the board to attend if you can. It, it's 6 o'clock on a Wednesday. It's mm -hmm. tough to schedule a meeting this time of year. Um, we wanted to wait until after the override vote in the election for sure. Uh, and wanted to clearly do it before June when school lets out. So May 23rd, 6 o'clock in the high school library. So you'll post that? I will. Okay. So this is an open? Public meeting. So kind of? It'll go out to all parents as mm -hmm. soon as an agenda is developed in the next week. And, and the agenda, folks can come in and? Ask questions. Ask questions, make and, suggestions. And you may have to say I cannot comment to some of the we, questions. We expect our presentation, which will mostly be uh, Dr. Doherty, to be maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Mm -hmm and as many questions and as long as we need to stay. Um, the reason for the six o'clock start, we normally start later, is there's uh, two middle school events at seven o'clock that night, so we want to allow those parents and families to attend both yeah. if, they, if they can. Okay. As we uh, develop more information, I'll certainly keep you involved. Great. Thank you. So you're ramping up HR to hire all those firefighters and police yeah, officers. I can't even tell you. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it's a good problem. It's a good problem to have better than the alternative. Yes, it is. So, okay. That's it? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, all right, moving along, we have a proclamation. Dan, in your uh, triple role as right. acting vice chair and secretary. Triple, triple three. Right. Uh, see, move to uh, approve the following proclamation for Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our town increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, beautify our community, and wherever they are planted are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, and whereas Reading has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation for over 29 years and desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2018 as Arbor Day in the Town of Reading and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. So that's a motion? Yes. Okay. Need a second. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. All right. It's now proclaimed. So, um, mm -hmm. this is going to be your first uh, mm -hmm. official. First official. This is the fun stuff. Yeah. So, you get to sign, and then um, I, I will sign and pass it to Andy. But um, while we're on Arbor Day, um, a resident had reached out to me in mentioning that numerous trees had been taken down over the course of the last several months with the, with the high winds. Yeah. Um, is there a plan in place um, to replant trees, or as we're Handling's yeah. um, we have a, a line item and a budget to do that, but I'm quite sure we won't replant nearly as many trees as have come down. Um, I'll get you more information at your next meeting. There is a, a donation fund for trees. Mm -hmm. uh, they're memorial trees, typically. Um, if I, as a resident, want to take down a town tree that's in the front of my yard, um, we require either funding or planting of two more trees. Mm -hmm. But when Mother Nature does it, we don't penalize Mother Nature. <laughs> so 
So, uh, well, let's start. <laughs> well, you can work on it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Yeah, I think the line item is. Uh, I'm going to say ten thousand. It could be less. Uh, trees these day is days a good uh, six or eight inch uh, smaller tree is seven eight hundred so not a lot of trees thank you great okay so moving along next item is um, uh, board reorganization and liaison so earlier um, in my comments I talked about reorganization the full reorganization of the board is going to happen 10th I think we have it scheduled June. for our last meeting uh, June. in June which I think is June 19th so uh, that's where we'll formally sort of reshuffle the deck however um, there are some liaison assignments which everyone everyone knows all of us are assigned to, uh, to sort of cover different boards and commissions and um, we do need to um, replace some of those that uh, Mr. Arena sat on um, and also uh, get Vanessa on the job here. So um, all of you have in your packets um, sort of our current liaison assignments and um, I, I, I don't want to go into a whole reshuffling of the deck now mm -hmm. um, because we're going to do that again in June. Yep. However, if there's certain things that make sense to kind of do now, I, I, I kind of want to assign that and get that going. So um, what I've done is I've written down um, I've written down some of the boards that uh, that John covered um, that he was sort of so solely the only liaison, um, and obviously we need to get that covered. There are other there are other ones where there we, we had two you know, we had two selectmen in that role, so it may or may not be that important right now between now and June to get that covered. So um, there are a couple that um, I, I think come right up off you know striking off the bat, HRAC and R and the RMLD. Um, uh, and so um, I, I just kind of wanted to see if there's, if Vanessa, if there's interest in either you or, Ian or someone covering that or you know, anybody uh, to kind of cover that. Um. We, we spoke briefly. Um, I think I'd like to stay with, as the subcommittee designee, but if you would like to take over the RMLD uh, liaison and the CAB liaison, I think that sounds I'd be great. happy to give that up. Okay. Great. Yeah. I'll take that on. Okay. okay. Um, and then there's there's eight track. Um, I don't know, uh, Andy, Vanessa, is that something that you're interested in? At the will of the bo board, I don't have any special expertise in that area. Well, I know you covered you, a lot of you the don't, meetings, but I've been to a lot of the meetings. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you can we deem that? Um, there's a few that um, that I don't know if John did these things by virtue of being chair or if he just felt a compelling need and interest to do this, but uh, the bylaw committee, moderator, and rules. Uh, that's probably uh, that, that's ex chair. officio, yeah. So it's not, it does it could be anyone yeah. that's usually a chair. Uh, should they chair. Lucky me. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so. And, and, um, I, and I would add, um, with all due respect to about the single assignment, <coughs> school committee is still an important one. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to kind of get, I was going to get to that. So okay. those are the, those are the ones that, um, Sort of just had John as the sole person, so you know it's good to get those filled. So, A track, Andy, RMLD, Vanessa. Yeah, I think RCTV could be handled by one, and I'm happy to hang on to that because okay. I'm involved. In oh, so John, uh, he was on the RCTV. Yeah. Uh, he, is he that the liaison things. or is that the negotiation? Uh, board. Of, yeah, it's probably the liaison, but it, it morphed into the also being the negotiation. So that was you. You and John covered that. Right? Yeah. Do you, I mean, between now and yeah, I'll confess I probably didn't go to any of the board meetings. So do you think it would be helpful to have a second one appointed now um, to help? I mean, uh, if, you're the, if uh, someone would like to, sure. I just don't want to stretch this too thin. Right. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Which one are we talking? This about? is the uh, RCTV board oh, of directors. The RCTV. For yeah. some reason, I was thinking of yeah. Right. Um, Truth be told, it's not a lot of heavy lifting. Right. Are, are we, is there anything coming up with that between now and June that we need to? The board of directors, not not aware. Uh, the next meeting um, for the cable negotiation yeah. that tends to be during staff time and during the day, May first. And and, I'll, I'll be part of that. And you're doing that. You were doing that with John, right? Well, he, or, mostly me. Uh, he okay. he went to some of the earlier sessions with the consultant. Okay. You, but I think do one, you feel a need to have a second one on between now. I mean, we might decide to do. It's a, it's, a, it's June, the pleasure or? of the board. Yeah, maybe at that point we really get going. Uh, but for now, okay. yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Barry, is there anything you want to give up, given that you're taking yeah, over that's additional what I'm ones from um, John? You know, I, I kind of thought about it. Um, 
And again, this is really only until June, so right. it's not, you know, I know there's some things that are going to be going on. Um, uh, I, I, I've been covering the CPTC and the zoning stuff with John. I think that could probably, given all the, the depth and velocity of those meetings, we probably could use a second person okay. on that. So if there's, if there's... I'd be interested in this. Would you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any... any it's fine with me. Okay. Um, and then there's the, then there's the schools. So um, actually, uh, John, John, and John, John and John, John and John. So I think we definitely need a, another person on schools. Um, yeah, I have an interest in that, Gary, um, because I used to be a school teacher. Um, I've been in school probably more years of my life than I've lived, although that's probably changing. <laughs> no, no. Can't be, that can't be strictly true. I, and I was, I were always uh, learning new things. Yeah, I know, I, I, and I was a budget liaison and enjoyed it immensely, mm -hmm. and I've had three kids, one kid's graduating this no. uh, May, yes. and so I, I- Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so any objection if- uh, No. Andy slides into that. Okay, so there's one other item I want to bring up um, for the board to consider. Um, Andy touched on it a little bit. Um, it's not technically a liaison position, um, and we never really had anything like this before, only because we've never had anything like this before, which is there are right now um, in this in town um, four projects that have started, large projects that border neighborhoods that are starting to put shovels in the ground. We heard the Lincoln Street one sort of already out of the gate. Um, as, as the uh, liaison to CPTC and um, zoning, which approves these projects, um, <coughs> we have now have a lot of these going on at the same time. I want to test the appetite of the board to see if, I don't know what we call it, maybe not a liaison, maybe not an advocate, maybe not a contact, but where one of us is sort of assigned to be the board of selectmen person for that particular project. So, if, you know, what would so, the role of that person be? I think the role of the person would be, uh, in my mind, in my view, is to be the the contact person for you know seven o'clock in the morning. They're you know they're supposed to start at eight. They're starting at seven. You know they, they have a, a, in addition to the to Bob and the police department and everyone else. There's someone to contact from the selectmen. We would all right. It's so we would advocate. We and eh, maybe, right maybe right. a back. Up in case responsiveness is seen to be lagging or lacking, but I think staff should always be the first. Yes, line. Right. yes. Um, but given there's so many of these, I understand. At okay. the same time, um, and you know tensions can get heightened. Right. Um, it, it's great. Thank you for coming and reporting on this. It, it, it would sort of be, but we meet every two weeks. Right. You know, just to have sort of like, and, and maybe it gets, we report on it, maybe not, maybe we're the liaison to the staff to say, hey, did you know, you know, sort of be the conduit. Um, and again, people can think of a name for it, but I just think it would might make sense given what's going on. And but there's going to be more projects too. So just wanted to basically throw that out there as an idea for thought, discussion, and-, and This would ideally be someone who's like in writing during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not Sorry, necessarily. Yeah, no. I mean, not you know what? These yeah. um, these yeah. things are pretty. You know, yeah. you could be anywhere, anytime with, with this. So no, no, Dan, this would not be all dumped on yeah. you. No, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I, if we could uh, maybe have two people doing it, I'd certainly be willing to yeah. be one of them. Well, just even just one per project, so that, that it gets. You That's know, a lot of or, or or you know, I mean, there's four right now just in downtown. Uh, but maybe just two in general. I, I, you know, I, I just I'm throwing it out there for discussion. I don't have a plan. I'm just 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 a seed. Just a question. Um, I can well imagine that um, you know one of you assigned a certain project, and then at a meeting you can give a report, give an update. Um, the challenge is going to be um, quite often on a project. There's things that go on that we don't know about, yeah. and that you may find out about. There's things that we do know about. So I, I just urge you to somehow figure out how all the communication is going to work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tonight I don't have a lot of assets at the meeting that could have given far deeper answers than I do. Um, ideally, you could do that at right. future mm -hmm. meetings, but we have to make sure all the information flows to you. Right. Bob, how, how successful were we in getting the Reading Village developer to put some sort of a status website together? We talked that, about that. I don't know, Dan. Is it, Cadence, do you know? There is, there is no website. Nothing? Okay. 
I, I see, and to go off of what you just said, um, look, people call us anyway. Yeah. You know, they're already doing it. Yeah. And, and I always say, talk to, you know, these are the, some resources you can use, either at the state level or at the town level. Um, they're already calling us, they expect us as their representatives to sort of represent them. On the same time, we can't be stepping on toes um, here. So I, I think it's a good idea that there, these are big projects, some of them, right. that the, pe that the, re the residents feel the representatives yeah. hear them, and, and um, if we find out things that Bob's staff doesn't know about, we get up to yeah. speed from Bob's staff so um, right. we can answer or, or help out or whatever. I would suggest we not act on this tonight, right. but develop some thoughts over right. the next three months, and when we make formal assignments and deal with a full board, right. Uh, have something more crystallized as to how this would work. Yeah. And I can envision that um, we can fill your agenda with updates on a scheduled yep. basis, but it's going to be difficult to react to an ad hoc issue. Again, you know, if, if we know what resources to bring to the table, but they may include the developer who we may not be able to bring to a meeting. So I can see this working well with scheduled updates because we can all point towards that date and that update. Um, the ad hoc stuff is going to be you know, maybe a little more important in some instances, and that's going to be a challenge to do the best we can. I, um, I like the idea of having perhaps a facilitator, I can call it that, um, for each project because I think it would streamline the process for residents because it gives them a single point of contact beyond, yeah. sim beyond just the staff. Um, because if they email five selectmen, and if no one gets back to them because someone, everyone right. thinks someone else has passed it along, then it, it creates a void. Sometimes so emailing five selectmen set. means emailing no selectmen. Yeah, yeah. We that's just that's assume Bob's going to take care of it. Yeah, so, Bob, so, you know, that Alphonse, we're actually, we're one of the five probably got right. to. Bob, how difficult would it be to set up our own statusing websites? Uh, Very difficult. Really? We don't get in. We don't know the yep. information. God. Yeah. Well, well I mean, the just, just as, just know, as our like project, that. that we know the information, that's easy. Well, I mean, I. I you know, Dan, I respect the concept of letting this incubate and develop it over time, but there's also a time-sensitive issue yeah, yeah, where things are starting to happen. So, so maybe the details of it can be worked out later, but we can take uh, e each, you know, we can spread out the tasks hmm. individually and have us be really up to date on what's happening, which includes communicating with the town um, uh, through Bob or however he'd like to do it on his end, the, the developer and the neighborhood, the, the neighbors, so that when something happens in a, in a certain day, um, it can hopefully the neighbors will feel better represented. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to usurp anyone's authority. No, it's a good um, point, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, we don't have a full complement of people here, so I don't want to get into any kind of, I, I'm just sort of throwing it out no. as a kernel for thought. Um, okay. Bob brought up some good points. Actually, everybody brought up some good points, and, and, and maybe, um, I, I, I don't want to do this and set the wrong expectations. So, yeah. you know, now it comes out, you know, Bob writes an article, you have a problem, <laughs> call Dan Ensmeyer. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I want to I roll it out the right way, so maybe, yeah. um, you know, Andy, you know, you're the policy guy, right? W why don't you just scope out, if you don't mind, no, no, give you a no. homework assignment, um, you know, scope out some, you know, thoughts on how you think this can work. I think May 1st is our, mm. Bob, our first meeting. Because I, I, I want John Halsey to participate in this as well. Yes. Um, and then we can kind of work things out. And then, then it's just easy to assign, right? Once we kind of know what it is, it's, you know, we'll just, we'll just do it. So, um, okay. right, is that, is that, um, all right. Um, Bob, I don't know if you want to do this now or wait. I mean, we'll wait till we go over your goals. But there were also some things that um, we had, li not liaisons to, but, um, oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, basically yeah. assignments on sort of the working groups um, you know, if you, I know you're going to be talking about that a little bit later if we want to just yeah, let me just take a quick look and a see quick what look at the things that John be. was working on that still need um, attention between now and okay. end of June um, yeah um, um, I would say that um, the long-term planning area broadly which you're involved in Barry 
Um, it was you and John. I right. think you and someone else would be helpful. Okay. Um, most particularly um, DPW, Garage, mm -hmm. and the broad topic of economic development priorities. Okay. Um, the, uh, the cable negotiations Dan has spoken to, the MWRA North Reading project is dormant right now from Reading's perspective, so Dan alone is fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's okay, because okay, anything else John was on is basically complete. Yeah. Okay. I do have a history. I was talking to Vanessa about some of the history of the uh, moving the DPW to where they are now, so mm -hmm. if my uh, institutional memory can be of help there. I certainly want to participate. Okay. So, you yeah. know. Okay. Why don't we just slot yeah, Dan, you know, thanks, Dan. Dan in and then, okay. and again, all, I mean, we're going to be doing new goals any, anyway, so again, just to uh, reshuffle the deck to now and June. Okay. Um, that, that's all I had on that. Um, so, for Sharon. 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 Oh, there she Thanks is. for hanging. I thought she went home. No. <laughs> just abandoned the mission. No. Okay, sorry. Sorry to keep you here so late. We had uh, five minute bio break. So I just want to start by welcome. Sure. Oh, three minute bio break. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, just, um, we'll take a, take a break. Three minute oh, recess. Three minutes. Perfect. I'll take that. Sorry.
Yes, sir. Oh, cool. Vanessa. Vanessa, she's glad I had enough. You don't have a quorum. You can't sit <laughs>
what was proposed. I wasn't there for executive session, so. Um, okay. But I'm happy to see that you're, you know, that you've moved forward with that because it's, you know, it's a, it could have been a three-year contract. It was a two. That option to right. extend definitely much needed. Okay. <laughs> so I do have that, and we will be revisiting that in May. I think it would be best to have a full board when you vote. No, I, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I was something on that, especially. Um, there's only three of us here tonight that were in the executive session, exactly. so yeah. I'd like, you know, obviously we're not going to have a full complement of that, but I'd like to make it as many people as as we have. The longer you can keep Bob here, the better. I yeah. just <laughs> say that. I mean, he's Thank you. I think. <laughs> so I thought it was. I thought back in six months ago, or six months prior to July, um, in, unless we served him notice or something yeah. like that. Doesn't it automatically renew for a year? I might no. have yes. um, yeah, my contract year starts August 1st. Okay. So if the board did nothing by February 1st, then it automatically extended for a year. Right. Technically, we didn't have to write anything down or agree to anything or have a meeting. Yes. I thought it was much better to have a meeting, have a full discussion above the board, and okay. then record a document. I see. We didn't need it, but I'd rather, if someone wants to ask what's the common manager's contract, I'd rather somebody be able to go somewhere and see yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah, and and Sharon, to elucidate a little on what you said regarding the con uh, um, honoring his contract, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't want to speak for the board, but we we need to follow contracts. Absolutely. Right. I think the one, the one catch that was in the contract that I wanted guidance on is that it's subject to a satisfactory review, which he definitely had, but mm -hmm. appropriation. And the line item, mm -hmm. because he intended to take a zero, was actually not funded for the mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. Yeah. And so you could that was the hitch I wasn't sure about. But he's part of administrative services, and there were savings and salaries within administrative services that fully covered right. this increase that we owed him. And that's why I reached out to the board and asked permission to, you know, just for you to sure. acknowledge my issue and that you agree with me so that yeah. I could pay the retro and not feel like you didn't agree with my assessment. And Ray Mears seemed to agree as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt it was an honorable thing that Bob was trying to do that in a time when we were in financial right. strain. But it put Andrea and I in a very awkward spot because we're looking at a contract saying, yeah. I need to honor this. A contract um, is a contract. And so yeah. Bob understood our situation, um, reached out to Ray, okay. and, and also I wrote a memo to both Bob right. and to the board chair and um, just asked that you guys look at it. And so right. I appreciate you doing that just to add comfort to my action. Sure. Okay. I, I just want a, a teachable moment for our new members. Uh, the town accountant and the town council are the only two positions that report directly to this board, and that's intended as a check and balance. They do not report directly to Bob, so we are responsible for hiring and supervising those. Not, not in a line sense, but for Sharon, but uh, hiring. So yeah. the, the town council reports di directly to us? Technically, yes. But. You, yeah. hire, you hire town. We hire, right. we, we hire, hire, we hire right. them. Um, but if, if, because I found this out, um, if we request as an individual yeah. selectman, we can't do anything as a board, you know, individually as a board. So I had asked town council about um, the the legal, you know, uh, Bill Brown's legal yeah. concerns about the override, and. Um, and he wrote back and CC town manager, and I th think that's because I can't, as an individual, well, direct town council to it, do anything. It's best since the clock is always running when Ray is working. Use Bob right. as your uh, gate, gatekeeper right. Right. because he may have other ways of getting the answer. Yeah, and there may have been other things yeah. that other people have already asked right. of the that town Bob council that know. you might not have. Yes. Right. So yes, it's always I think a good idea to, to keep Bob in the in the loop on right. that. Right, right. I, I but, understand. That, but Bob, that doesn't pro preclude if any of us have. A question for Ray. Pick up the phone or an email or, or, or something. Or, we, or well, how, do, how do you want to handle it? Is that, that the, is yeah, the preferences? I mean, I think I know the answer, but I just want to at least talk about it. I think it's a full board discussion, and I'm happy to contribute when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, there are risks if you don't go through one point person, right. yeah. whoever it is, whether it's the chair, whether it's me, whether it's yep. someone else. Yep. Um, we may have responses at the ready already. And don't need to ask the question. Okay. No, that makes sense. So, right. And I think, again, it's a communication thing. Okay. Yeah, it so was, if you have the answer, then it, to incur legal fees makes no sense. Right. That, that, that was, and, and, and I felt sort of conflicted at the time because it was an emergent issue. 
um, and I and I needed wanted to try to figure it out. I was confused on on some of the state guidelines, and town council uh, was very helpful. But that's sort of me. Uh, and yeah. well, I guess you know, without board approval, asking the town council to work. I guess the guidance is to to go through Bob. Yeah, and the exception would be clearly if you have an issue with me, then you want to include yeah, Sharon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Sharon, just a couple of things, really quickly. Uh, uh, unless you've got more. more? No, no. Okay. That was so, a um, couple of things. So, um, I, I think part of the override was getting you some help. Oh yeah. So, um, can you talk a little bit about how you plan on doing that and sort of what what how your world changes and. The first thing we have to figure out is space. This is a very small building. That's not. not there was not. About that. That. We don't have Come any on, sorry, to put this yeah. yeah. So we really have to think about space. Um, and and I mean, I actually think that there's a member of my group that I would want to promote up and hire for her position. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know mm -hmm. ideally what I'd like to do if she's interested. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And I think that this person knows enough already that the training would be minimal and would mm -hmm. actually provide great help for me right off but the top. But she's part-time now. So. Yeah, oh, okay. that's the only that's, downside, that's but I feel cool like that still it. would be a huge relief mm -hmm. for me. She knows so much and has been with us for so long that I think that it would be a good transition up for her and it would really be helpful to me. But the space is an issue. It's, it, we really do struggle with where, where are we going to put this person? You can't just hire somebody and say, we'll figure that out later. You kind of well, have that's to how have I got hired. <laughs> I mean, I remember they said they put you in a little table on the yeah. <laughs> you back into chair in the conference room, pretty much. Uh -huh. So, because the money is for fiscal 19, we can't really hire for it right away. Okay. Um, it would probably be something as we approach the end of the fiscal year, we would post it. Okay. Um, and hopefully by then, we'll have some plan about where to put the person, because we are very tight. Well, uh, obviously, I'm out to describe a high-class problem, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the bandwidth to hire all the assets that, that the voters um, in town meeting hopefully approve on July 1st. That's just not possible. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're working very closely with the school department, basically to give them priority for the school year, uh, because they have a much harder deadline where right. things need to yeah. be in place. Right. That's 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 generally yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I will share with you that uh, they will have a second SRO for the opening of school. That's, oh, that's great. Higher. Yeah. That's an internal that's situation. Right. I know that that was in our, you know, when we ranked them, that was police yep. officer five. But yep. it sounds like that might be police officer one in yep. terms of the first hire. Yep. Okay. That's great. Um, Sharon, one other thing. So part of what we need to do is we need to kind of look, now that, you know, we have the option on Bob's contract, we need to look at the next one. And I know you've helped before in sort of gathering information. Actually, I already reached out to HR to help with uh, HR, survey, you know, just you maybe. Know, because she, she's got resources that can get it that would, information. It would be really helpful fast. to get not just, you know, just sort of what the salary structures are, but even if we can lay our hands on contracts. I mean, ours the is on a website. The contracts that go to the website. And yeah, ours are on the website. I know other towns aren't as good as we For are. For our peer communities. I can yeah. give you a list of town, some town manager emails. I actually, I may have all 25. Okay. I don't want to be able And if you can get that to me, um, and then we'll, we'll uh, I think what I'd like to do is have sort of a second selectman um, to kind of work on that going forward. But again, mm -hmm. until we have a full complement. But at least I know that's a, a legwork item that could take a long time, mm -hmm. especially when you're calling other towns to get us stuff. So if you can start getting that, and then I can be the focal point for that. Awesome. Because uh, we need to work on that. I can do so. that. Absolutely. Uh, Bob and Sharon, two brief questions. One, um, are we do we manage town council? Is is that correct? And, and is, the, is the we a you or a me? No, we the board. The board is the board because I, I guess I, I manage we, the we budget. Right. We yeah. haven't been doing performance reviews on. Oh it. no no you don't do that. No. Okay. okay no, no and and because no, he's not an employee. Uh, right. right. the, 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 the council would always welcome your you, comments. Yeah. But, right right but I, I thought have we been remiss and, no. and did I miss something? Um, and then Sh Sharon, um, given that the override passed and and um, I think that. Many residents are looking for greater understanding, greater detail on how we spend our money. Mm -hmm. um, and this would obviously need discussion by the board, but maybe having the quarterly reports provide a, a little, drill down a little bit more. Obviously, there's certain mm -hmm. things you can't present, but um, it would help me to understand to better. Yeah, and, I've run a report. And, uh, I've run the reports before, but sometimes people complain that the Mayor's report isn't. Um, as user friendly too, or too large. Yeah. Maybe I can run it into Excel and make you something that would be something yeah. you could look at. All right, thanks. Yeah, I could do that. Anything else for Sharon? 
we're just thrilled that you're here. Yeah, um, thank you. Thrilled that we got you some help, and um, that would be great. We um, <laughs> we're, we're just delighted. So keep it up. Thanks. So. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. Just one yeah. more thing that does involve Sharon. Um, Selectman's policy, I think it's Article 1, talks about fraud. We've discussed that. Oh, that's the one part we did not that's really. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention no, that. That's okay. yeah. So at some point, them. you and the board will get together. Well, we don't policy. have any, so therefore it's a exactly. short discussion. Right? Okay. So maybe we could just reduce it to please mm -hmm. don't do anything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so would you want me to work collaboratively with them outside of a meeting or bring yeah, suggestions to the meeting? Um, maybe with a full board, yeah. That discussion. Yeah, 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 again. But so maybe um, bring suggestions on what we should have there versus yes. what is there. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can wrap that is in. listed as the goals person for finance department policies and procedures. So you know what? How soon do we want to have that problem. discussion? Yeah. Do we know? Sorry. How soon will we want to have a discussion? Whenever you're comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Um, we need to advertise a public hearing two weeks in advance of oh, okay. the formal vote. That's oh, is that a, is that a, would that require a public hearing? Um, to adopt a new fraud policy as oh. part of your policy. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, right. Yeah. you can have an informal discussion. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So they could make changes after a two week. Yeah. I mean, most likely the board is going to want to have a discussion, and then in the future a uh, hearing. We'll, we'll put that on an agenda. Mm -hmm. agenda. Okay. Perfect. Thank um, thanks, Sharon. Get home. No. Um, next thing, uh, town manager goals update. Bob, did, did you? Did we do the contract? Up? No, we did. Uh, that, that's oh, talked about. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I just have a, a brief um, rundown. I I done it recently, but uh, for Vanessa, I wanted to give an update because um, thank you again for reaching out. We've also spoken a couple of times, but not about goals. Um, so I'm just going to fly through uh, very quickly. Um, just an update on goals. Not a lot has changed since I last spoke. There's a few things. There's uh, five broad categories. I'll just read them. Finance, operations, policy, long-term planning, and community. Um, I'm happy to say that all the finance goals are complete, although that does include my suggestion at your last meeting that we uh, remove uh, for the foreseeable future um, the idea of charitable, charitable giving that our treasurer, Andre, was going to be in charge of working with Andy. I don't see that as a high priority given all the work that's on everyone's plate. Um, under operations, um, I just uh, reminded Sharon about the finance department policies, policies and procedures. Um, your fraud policy can go when you're comfortable with it. Um, Andre, Sharon, and I will discuss the suggestions she's made. But again, I, I don't see the need to uh, have that complete by June 30th. If we can, we can. If we can't, we'll do it uh, when it's comfortable. Um, public Works is complete, although at some point we'll want to come back um, and address there. I think it's, it's Article Policy 7 or something. One of the issues with your policies, you've only gone through part of number one, and there's like seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and even part of one and two are the hardest by right. far, and they don't have to go in order, but that's one and two of the ones we've worked the most on. Um, some of the other policies have things that don't belong where they are, and you've had this issue before where someone suggested we should move this from number one to number two, and you can't delete it out of one until you put it into two right. formally. So maybe I'll give you an update on all the policies at a future meeting. Um, the finance policies, I'm sorry, the DPW policies have, for instance, recreation in it, which is not in that department anymore. It's been for several years. So there's some updating that's necessary. You remember the meeting that you had with uh, four DPW staff in here to talk about fees, for instance, and you've, you've already done that. So I'll bring them in one more time, but I think they're in good shape. Employee retention, I think that's uh, taken care of with the override, I hope. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I've spent this week um, maybe half collective bargaining <coughs> and half um, interviewing, yep. and it is a very competitive employment market out there. Um, we are seeing good candidates. It, it, Honestly, it seems to be somewhat random. You post the same job. We've posted one job five times. And in February, most recently, we got easily the best set of candidates. And we're now going through the process. Why February versus the last two years, I have no idea. Um, 
you know, hiring is somewhat vague. You've got to have a good process, but you can't tell when someone decides they want to have a job and apply. So, I mean, are you, are you, do, you, are you do you feel comfortable that you've got the right <coughs> tools, human resources, I mean, people, processes, able to kind of, uh, you know, recruit? Them? Comfortable, no, but yes, we can get it done. Um, between, you know, we, we share uh, one employee with the town and the schools. And that's why I've discussed with John, we really need to, for his sanity, plan out his life for the next few months. If you need him for a series of weeks at a time, it's usually two days each. Okay. Um, and then he's taken a class on Fridays. Um, we don't have the HR resources for the task ahead, but we'll figure it out is the answer. And John and I are very hands-on in HR. It's one of the most important things we do. Okay. So that, that'll work out fine. Um, building security study has been finished um, in terms of whatever the realistic short-term goal was. Um, the uh, dispatch center funding is part of the capital plan in front of town meeting in a, in a week and a half. Stay tuned on the rest. Um, as you know, public safety staffing and training has now been dealt with. It was dealt with even before the voters voted. We did the best we could to explain it. Um, it was a little bit nerve-wracking to open the camel's tent a little and tell people that you know what, what the two chiefs told them because yeah. confidence and um, you know feeling of safety is a big part of public safety and you know, we hope we walk the line carefully i know they did they did the best they could professionally i think they did a good job um, general bylaws you'll get an update from the bylaw committee at town meeting um, i believe their process is complete but they are also going to roll in uh, ne the next charter update into some longer term schedule and uh, you know I'll just let them speak to that the bylaw committee had had a very difficult time getting a meeting together um, we do have an, o an opening and one or two I think two applications for it. so the uh, bylaw committee appointment committee and the FinCom appointment committee will both uh, as Barry knows schedule a meeting as soon okay. as possible there are applicants for both already okay. your chair didn't go warm for very long and there's already two applicants as of today mm -hmm. so let's see that's good uh, yeah it is personnel policies as I've mentioned I wanted to get through all the collective bargaining which hopefully will be done by June and then when that is complete we'll bring you a revised personnel policies one of the hot topics there'll be no surprise to this board is social media policy so we'll just leave it at that yeah. it's uh, every town is different it changes frequently and i don't really know what the best practice is other than turn off all your electronic right. devices well we need a social media policy for us yeah. to like communications but um the legal review of our union contracts is complete I and mean, it was done very very well mm -hmm. I felt so much better when that was done because it's not been done in over 25 what years. What kind of shape were they in? Uh, very good, actually. Really? I mean, okay. sloppy, but legally defensible. Mm. So I was very happy. I, I sort of thought they would be, but I'm not a lawyer. And I, again, we had never asked Labor Council to go sort of soup to nuts. Uh, Board of Selectmen policies we're still in the middle of. Well, that's not your fault. It's ours. Remember you said that. <laughs> um, affordable housing production plan has been renewed or readopted, so that's finished. Um, Long-term planning is, is the big issue for the board to sit down with staff as needed and really discuss. Um, I, I don't think we're going to solve anything tonight, but I think it's a serious topic that we need to talk about. You see how busy we are, and by we, I really do mean the whole community. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the number was 16 projects, and that does include things as small as three and four um, house um, cul-de-sacs. Um, but when you encourage and promote economic development and it happens, you need to be ready to deal with it. And so, Bob, can you give an update where we are filling Andrews? Not this Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew, um, um, economic we, development. I director. have two dates on my calendar. I think they're next week to conduct interviews. So until I know more, I, I don't know more. But we have people to interview. Yes, okay. I believe so. Um, I don't know if the dates on my calendar were reserved to have an initial discussion because you and I will be involved in the hiring. Um, so I, I'll have to ask Gene. I just right. don't know. They okay. put dates on my calendar a long time ago. Right. Um, you'll have an update from our town engineer 
uh, one of the, your May meetings, it probably sounds like the May 15th one now, for the cell tower water storage issue. Um, community center, senior center, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. Master plan options and approaches, that's something that uh, Julie and Jean should talk to you about. Because we're due for one. Right? We are due for one. We have, yeah. if you will, all the pieces, or most of the pieces, including pieces most towns don't have, but that, that are sort of overview doc document needs updating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the uh, master plan is that it, 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 does that fit like some kind of rubric, or are we, you know, we kind of free to kind of? It's an MAPC uh, uh, template, isn't it? Oh, I recall. I imagine there is one, Dan, but I don't know if there's other options. In fact, I'm sure there is one. You know, I, I was not involved. The last time it was done was more than ten years ago. And I know what it looks like, but I don't really know what the process was followed, other than it took, I believe, two years and a lot of community involvement, a lot of meetings. Now, do we want to get something like sort of on the docket to kind of just talk about what we, yeah, what she, we want, she how we want tell to do you, it? Or? She asked for funding in the budget mm -hmm. to start it. I said no. 200000 How about grants? Not, not available. Really? Yeah. So. I think you need to have a serious discussion about, as a practical matter, what is the value of this? We have to do one. There's no getting around that. Right. But what is the value, and what are the options of how to do it at what cost, whether it's staff time or expense? Right. I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, having it, if you, if, you, if you go back and look at it, and it was done 10 years ago, or more than 10 years ago, and you, and you look at the reality now, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that kind of we identified risks and issues and we worked on them right we did. And, and and so it has i mean it has value and it, it has value but it's it's almost obsolete three weeks or three months yeah. after it's written it, it's the planning process that is more than the plan that counts right. that's what we're doing yeah well it would be good to have Jean come in and get a get yeah. thoughts on 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 okay. that i mean she'd be more than happy to share yeah so. well <laughs> you know <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, economic development priorities. I think we've done a really good job. A Andrew was great. He was only here for, I think, 15 months. It was like he was here for five years with the amount of progress we had. Uh, obviously, he's not responsible for all of it, but he was, re he was really good at what he did. Um, and he's still spear fishing in California and says hello. <laughs> uh, cable negotiations. Dan is giving you an update. Um, I know the meeting schedule is going to go through the summer. It won't, so it won't be complete by June. Um, the North Reading MWRA situation, uh, they were scheduled to come in and give you an update at their request, yeah. and then they canceled. I don't know Again. what to tell you. I thought the waltz is off with Andover. Um, I think that waltz is 99 years worth. Yeah. There was an Andover town meeting last week on a Wednesday. But want to give a little background? Oh, for sure. The of the I, I'm not really sure where to start. <laughs> Um, North Reading draws their water locally um, from the Ipswich River and from um, Andover. They buy water. I, I think the ratio was something like two thirds from Andover. Um, they had a long term agreement with Andover. Um, Andover was um, somewhat difficult to deal with, I think is fair to say. Mm -hmm. uh, over that period of time, somewhat disorganized. Uh, and North Reading felt that they were at the behest of Andover for something that's very important, just like we were for the uh, Ipswich River. Plus, they wanted to get off the Ipswich River, but in their case, again, it's much smaller. So they be began exploring uh, the MWRA, which they can only get through Reading. So they had to talk with us, our DPW staff, our engineering staff, especially, and myself have spent uh, literally hundreds of hours with North Reading to allow them to do this. And there, there are some benefits to Reading. I, I can't honestly say they're worth the hundreds of hours we spent. Part of that has got to just be a good neighbor, and, good and they are a good neighbor. Yeah. Um, but the benefits to us would be to have a backup water supply that could be Andover if something went wrong with the MWRA, whereas right now our backup is um, water we'd have to chlorinate out of the river. Mm -hmm. And it would God. do some damage to our water distribution system if we ever had an emergency. Um, so that that would be the primary benefit. We can charge a wheeling charge, which is a negotiation, to account for the wear and tear in our system of water traveling through it. And it would do some technical things that only uh, Peter Isabel could really explain well. 
um, in terms of the flow within our system and the distribution. And then that water supply for them would also help leverage some new, uh, I don't know if it's commercial development or other types of yes, development up yes, there. Yes, they are. Yeah. They have the opposite problem, problem of Reading. They have plenty of land, but they don't have the infrastructure to support the development. Yeah. We have the opposite. Which also could be a boon for the RMLD. Right. Good. More right. power. Um, so it's been a four-year process, I think, by now. We've worked closely with the MWA. We've, uh, I've been to three North Reading Town meetings for different points in time. Um, North Reading's town meeting has approved everything that they've asked, been asked for. Um, North Reading has spent over a million dollars so far transitioning to the MWRA. Uh, but sometime within the last 18 months, Andover came back and said, wait a minute, we're losing our biggest customer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted North Reading to come back to the table. So, you know, as selectmen, you'd understand you have no choice but to come back to that table. When another deal is put on the table, you have to analyze it. And they're still in the middle of that. They, they've, they've walked away several times from Andover, but they keep coming back. So what, the, the way I left it with North Reading That's a good was uh, call us <laughs> when you want. And Amanda, so they're not on your agenda. Um, if they ever want to get on your agenda, I'm going to ask them for at least a month's notice yeah. and uh, to have a good story. Okay. And the one thing I explained to them very, very carefully at the beginning, and I've said several times, if you ever want to come to, to Reading town meeting to do anything, you're going to have to be ultra prepared with a full story. Yeah. Um, they have a home rule legislation in front of the House and the Senate right now that is to sign a 99-year memo of understanding or memo of agreement with either Andover or Reading. That's how they operate. Right. Wow. So they don't have a plan. They just know they want a 99-year permission for a 99-year MOU. Part of that. And I told them if you come to Reading Town Meeting to ask for a 99-year MOU, you better have the whole story mm -hmm. completely done or we're just not going to even do it. Their town meeting approves one-page school budgets. Yes. Their town meetings are rather quick. They're fun. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the long story. Um, well, I don't regret the time we've sunk in because, again, they are a good neighbor and we're exploring our own water system a little bit more deeply. Okay. Yeah, Andy? Oh, I'm just, uh, um, you know, I was wondering in the future if there's a way we could, um, if they're going to use a lot, utilize a lot of your time, which you don't have a lot of um, doing it in my and staff and staff um, is there a way to sort of you know some agreement for them okay if you're going to be using up these uh, yeah. you know hundreds of staff hours um, we'd like to see some commitment you know our, um, our public safety is probably the best model um, mm -hmm. with mutual aid yeah they just have an understanding if you need us we'll be there right now if a community is constantly calling on you and you are always providing for them and it never comes back then there's a discussion okay I would say with the with the MWA issue only yes that's an issue but okay. there's so many other things we work right. on together I'm okay okay with it. All right. All right. Great. Um, I, I will tell you they help our public safety mutual aid wise all the time great so I take your point though Any, uh, anything else on that or? Um, no and then um, the last couple um, Laura and uh, Amy Lannon are working on an archival uh, historical preservation grant. I, th I don't know. I think they've supplied the uh, or applied the for the grant. I haven't heard. Is this to take care of the artifacts that are here? Um, there's so many. There's so much in Reading that it would only put a start on it. Yeah. Um, Laura did some last year. She has ten or fifteen thousand in the budget this year. And um, if she hasn't shown the board, I'll have her show the board what the, what the difference is, the before and the after the historical documents. It's really pretty amazing. Um, but we have historical documents that in public buildings that I can, with a key, I can get into and touch from the 1600s. Um, so, but I can't touch them too often because they'll too brittle. Yeah, that's not a good But thing. we really need to do a better job on our historical documents. And I suggest that the last two items uh, be removed. Um, you need to develop um, Article 2 for the selectman's policy of how to deal with volunteers and create boards uh, before we can really get into that. And aspect. we can fold that into the yeah, yeah, that could be part two. Barry, I have a question, a procedural question on this. So in the past, um, we were all listed down here, and I'm listed on a number of items. 
Are we supposed to reach out to Bob and say, how can I help you on this? Or do we, um, is, no, do we traditionally, is we've, we've been reached out those to? Those are more like working groups. So yeah. a lot. So it's basically not, it, it, it's staff and selectmen. So like, for example, I was on the economic development stuff. So yeah. I probably went to three or four meetings with Gene and okay. that Gene actually chaired with some, like Andrew, Andrew Corona was there and right. when things came up. So some of these will have kind of lives of their own. It's mm -hmm. usually, Bob, if I'm not mistaken, it's usually the staff person that's sort of chairing that working group um, and you know those call meetings as applicable um, you know as things come up so it, it's not really um, you know we're not running it we're right. just sort of part of it it's a, it's a work like any other working group so I, I haven't been involved in any of, of, of the working groups yet so I just encourage you to encourage your staff to reach out to me and also too know. this is this this was this year I mean we're going to be developing our next year's goals right which will also flip and we're also going to kind of shuffle the deck in terms of because right. uh, the priorities have changed but meanwhile please ask yeah I, I I'll say that in looking at these um, there's you know 25 lines but there's a normal Enormous differences between one line and the next in terms of the amount of time meetings and staff. Yeah, so yeah. some of these, some selectmen have been very involved with. Uh, once I'm done collective bargaining, I would expect that HR will reach out to you, for instance, on personnel policies. Right, right. Um, but I wasn't involved in the for. I didn't go to any affordable housing production plan meetings. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask Jean. I don't know okay. that she really had many. Okay. She just worked directly with the state. Yeah, sure. So. Right. I promise I, the I way promise I look at this is this is you as a resource, but if you view it differently, certainly so I, I That's why I asked the question. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, as mu involved as much as, as time and interest allows. And also, just some of the times these things percolate up to be a lot of immediate attention so yeah um, you know there's no real hard and fast rule right. I, I do want to move it along just yeah. because I promised myself internally we get out of here thank you not 15 <laughs> we're gonna, uh, we may not make it we'll make it um, so it's gonna be a popular uh, just um, pro <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moving along town meeting uh, Warren articles I'm not sure there's anything we really need to vote on but I know there is with the override stuff though I mean does that change anything you want to go I mean no, I'll, I'll tell you I'm just trying to find the page clear on the on the budget, but All right. page 5E3, uh, FinCom approved this last night. This really, I mean, you can vote certainly, but normally when you vote, it's in order to get in print for town meeting. It's right. obviously too late for that. Uh, the board can do what it wants. So there's a lot of Warren articles if you want to vote on any of them. Uh, previously, the board had not indicated. Well, we had a snowstorm once, yeah. right. but you'd not indicated a strong. We, we generally don't take positions on general bylaws or zoning right. bylaws, right. but there are exceptions. Right. It's from time. Bob, can I ask you if uh, the yeah. bylaw committee has already taken up the discussion on 14, the uh, renaming of the board? Um, they have. What happened? I don't know what report they'll give the town meeting. Yeah. Um, I think they first met in February after trying to meet since November town meeting and failing. Yeah. So town council and I worked with them and kept the bylaw chair in, in the loop of what we were doing in order to get something on the warrant. So yeah. um, they voted to support the article, but beyond that, I don't know what their thoughts are. I'll let them speak. They need to give a report under Article 2 that's a little broader than just that. Right. Um, it's gender neutral language in all town documents, if you will. So I'll, I'll just rely on that. They didn't weigh in whether you know executive board is the right name or select board or. Well, they had a discussion, but it was after the Warren article was closed because they hadn't met. Right. So they didn't really. Well, that, that can be subject to amendment in any case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so could, could, actually, could that be on oh, the sure. so town? Well, it's, it's up to the town town moderator, but yeah. one would assume so. Well, yeah. Well, would, uh, okay. is there any discussion? At, well, I guess I'm, I'm agnostic as to what the name is, but the process, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. uh, if we, it's only fixed in the bylaws and not in the charter, our two primary documents are now out of sync with each other. Um, uh, Ray has written it such that I know. it's workable. And the idea was yeah. to, when the charter committee or commission, whichever is formed, uh, reforms, to deal with it in that way. And this temporary solution legally works fine. So, so ultimately, the name change would be put before the voters, correct? If it is done through the charter. Right. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the solution that other communities have, never mind different names, yeah. um, some have just adopted, we're going to call ourselves something different and not change any legal documents. We're just going to refer to ourselves differently. That's one extreme. 
The other extreme is going through the charter and going right. to the voters. You know, everybody can do what it wants. Um, well, Winchester voted on Tuesday. I assume it was to change the charter. If, if they had to vote. I mean, they actually went right, to the voters, that. and they uh, and again, I, I mean, they went to the voters. So I assume because it was a charter change. That sounds like it. And they may go to the board, and they approved, and yeah. they just changed it from board of selectmen to select board. Yeah, and Wakefield's doing that too, I think. Uh, Wakefield's yeah. going to be a town council, C yeah. C I L C O U N C I L. Oh. Yeah. C My last uh, understanding was they are not going to the voters. They are not changing their charter. Really? They are not okay. changing their bylaws. They're just going to just start using... Yeah, the, and the one phone. thing that's really important to keep in mind, legally in Massachusetts, Board of Selectmen is still what the title is. And it's still so no matter what line. you choose to right. do or want to do or the community right. wants to do, we have to have a pointer back to that. Right. And you or Ray explained that very well, that if we change the bylaws, which is, I think, yeah. what the town meeting will decide, mm -hmm. um, it's... There will be a connection between the right. two. Right. I think we also have to be sense of the fact that I think the public at large does not maybe understand why this change is being discussed. Okay. I, I, I took full note that both candidates used the term selectmen, and I think they did that deliberately so as for the traditional views of the town, so they would know which board they're talking about. Select board might not connote the right yeah. thing. So I think it's important to have a public process for the entire town on this. Well, yeah. certainly town meeting will have that discussion, and yeah. if it is going to go to a charter discussion, then you'll need right. a right. broader forum. Um, the only input that town council or I had was, first of all, to get the legal stuff right, mm. and to throw something on there that um, was as gender neutral as possible was the technical instruction. And um, as I, I may have discussed in front of this board, not in front of Vanessa, um, select board is the most common, the most typical, and that was done early on. Mm -hmm. Some communities have found that that has caused a little more dissension than expected because yeah. there are then select men and select women. Right. Okay. There's a woman in a certain community that wants to be called a select man. Yeah. And in order to take that whole discussion away, you know, another term seemed better. Um, town council is an interesting one because the city council, mm. but as as. Oh, is this changing aldermen to town uh, to city council? No, but they, Wakefield is going to be a town, or they are, a town council, CIL. As opposed to As town opposed meeting. to a board of selectmen. Oh. Oh, I see. Instead of a city council. So they have a town uh, meeting and a board. I mean, a, somewhat of a different. And, and then Ray, I suggested that to Ray, and he said, I am not going to be a town solicitor. <laughs> people will get town so council, council and council is and then Wakefield's realizing it's mm. a bit of a language right. problem. Yeah, they shut back page down. So you know, town council and I have no axe to grind here. Whatever yeah. the community wants is fine. Well, that'll come. That'll come uh, to the town meeting. I'm, sure, sure, I'm sure it will. Yeah. Take it will, up the whole it will most likely yeah. take up <laughs> five hours. And I think <laughs> you could say member of executive board, board member of select board. They both. Were, you you were can, but it's hard to. As far as I can tell, it's hard to put a gender in executive board. Yeah. You know, one yeah. member of the public said executive board sounds very, I can't remember the word, sort of top down. Um, and I said, well, select board, select board <laughs> has the same. <laughs> it depends yeah, on the board, it's really. Board of yeah, it's all interpretation. Right. I'm just saying we could ba okay. make, we could write it so that you, you're you all in have general. a five day debate on this. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, and we're not going to have that now. So, uh, right. is there any. Um, <laughs> there's, there's no action. No yeah, action. yeah, I agree. Right. So, um, just moving on to the, to, before we do minutes. Um, I, I had um, I talked about, about putting this on about uh, the new policy that we implemented um, about new members. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to talk about tonight since we have one really, really new member and one, you know, fairly new member about, um, you know, in your, in, I guess in your minds, or actually not just for, for your discussion, but all of ours, what would be a good way to sort of implement that policy? An on, what kind of an onboarding process do you think, Andy, would you have liked to have? Vanessa, do you want to have? You know, Dan. You know what we should have done ten years ago. Um, whether that's documentation, formal mentoring, meeting with you know, just different kinds of things. I think it would be great to have that discussion now. Um, and then if it's developing a booklet or a pamphlet or a, you know whatever, kind of get those documents in there. But just 
again, the hour's late. I don't want to dwell on it too, too much, but I do want to kind of cut it out there. So I'm just going to throw that out hmm. for discussion. You can have both formal and informal processes, I think, for the orientation. I think sometimes, you know, simple one-on-one -on -one meetings can get a lot done. I think I hope we did a little bit I of that. I think I'm coming at this a little bit differently in that I've attended sure. the last yeah. year and right. I've been on FinCom prior, so right. I think I have more experience in it than I think perhaps Andy coming in. Yep. But something as simple that the one I first started is procedurally. Mm -hmm. um, when someone makes a motion, when you attend town meeting, mm -hmm. what is the process? When or what do the different terms mean? Sure, um, I could help. With when that. you, yeah. um, you know, a glossary, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, That's interesting. And then, because there's so many things that, you know, having served for so long, you, you sort of take for granted. Right. Yeah. Um, I think another one, um, FAQs, for example, I got an email from the resident about trees. Yeah. So, okay. how do I handle that? Yeah. Is that yeah. something I wait and send to the board? Is that something I just defer to Bob and tell the resident? You bring the I, chainsaw and you're enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That would be a sight. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> how to handle the different types of inquiries that you... Right. had um, and where to direct them appropriately. Sure. Well, and, and some of the answers to that are embedded in policies that are 25 years old. So that's one of the challenges that the board has. Right. Um, by and large, staff is happy to assist. Um, but there are some things that the you know, selectmen have to do themselves in order for some town to assist. I would be the worst person to ask how to develop an onboarding for the selectmen because I wouldn't know what you don't know. There's so much going on up there. I wouldn't know where to start. Now, the Finance Committee used to have a notebook when I was first on, and Barry I got it, too. Yeah. still have it. And we've discontinued that because the primary use of the notebook was documents that weren't online, like bylaws or zoning bylaws, general bylaws, zoning bylaws. Policies. And some policies. As I thought about it, everything that used to be in that notebook that I still have is online. Yeah. But that doesn't help the new FinCom member know where and how and all that. So yeah. it's still a really important topic, but you don't need necessarily this anymore. Right. It's much more maybe a couple pages list, with right. some directions right. to the and, and links maybe yeah. to um, yeah. where you find that stuff. MMA has a really very good selectman book that they give out for free. Yep. Um, and it's great, but it's thick. Okay. So, um, I don't know that I've seen that. They like books. Right. And Robert's, like, learning Robert's rules. I, I could jot down, jot down what I should have learned six months before I did um, and send them to you for a short, Bob. And, uh, and there are actually differences in the rules between town meeting and select. And we run more or less on Robert's, which reconsideration is a majority. Mm -hmm. Town meeting time, it says two thirds. So, things like that. Yeah. Bill Brown's the best research. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I just uh, I think one of the best things um, coming on new um, would be the other four people. Yep. Um, yeah. And you know, just I'm here. I don't I don't know if we need to formalize a policy where you know it's 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 a formal mentoring, but you know, hopefully at least informally. Um, you know. Uh, for someone new to come and maybe it's the first two or three months sitting once a week with and just help me with this or help me with that and you know I mean I mentor people at work um, there is a formal document that uh, the things I need to do and uh, items I need to cover I, I mean I, I don't know if we have the time to develop that but certainly the spirit of that would be I think good and I don't know if we have to memorialize it in a policy but at least you know culturally you know, when somebody new comes on, they're embraced by the other four people, and you know, we we bring them on and, and get them up to speed as much as possible. Good. Some people will know more. Some people might know less. Um, but certainly on an as-needed basis, I, I, I think would be a good a good thing. Yeah. I think where staff can help, um, and tonight was the example, is for the town account, the town manager right away for the new member to just go over whatever we do for them. Yeah. 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 Good. And that's why. Sharon came tonight, but again, um, we need to we need to follow your lead on this. You need to tell us what you want to do. Right. I think um, one thing that might be helpful also is with with Bob's permission, um, meeting with some of the key department heads or all the key department heads, um, just to get it started. 
I think that's a great idea. Um, and Bob, I'm sure they're open to it. I mean, uh, the, um, they they would want me to be included in an email. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, right, right. Exactly. Because if you ask them, they'll just ask. Me. Right, and that's fair. I'm fine with it. Yes. I mean, you know, again, you have department liaisons, and we can talk about this in June. Um, so you also have a resource. You know, if there's a liaison of the police department, there's an existing standing selectman, unless they're not still serving that could join you in a meeting like that to make it better. Um, generally speaking, our department heads are very open to that. It's got to be scheduled, and sometimes it's a fire, which I just found out is going on right now. Well, is that what we heard? Oh, yeah, it was a little while ago. Um, but I, I'm, I'm generally much more, honestly, an open town manager than most. I'm happy to provide that access in an organized way. Um, Peter would not let you talk to anyone yeah. without him being in the room, period. So kind of Possible script. exception was John Fudo. <laughs> um, and most of my colleagues are like that way because yeah. they do not want communication to go awry. I, I accept that risk, and it's just easier not to try to put myself in the middle of it all, honestly. Right. Well, it's also a very good department heads. Right. I, I trust their judgment. Right. I think part of it is more, um, as I see it, is, is more of an introduction. Excuse me, I have to go talk this way. Oh, okay. um, I see it more as an introduction to each of the department heads so they can tell new members um, what they do, what their priorities are, how they yep. function. Um, and then from that point forward, having the communication go through Bob, which I think is the appropriate channel. Um, okay. Well, I mean, obviously, you've gotten permission as, as a new person to, you know, contact them and, um, you know, meet with them, ask any questions that you have, and, and, and all of that. So, I mean, I think it's important um, that um, new new members are embraced, welcomed, because you know, it's a lot of work, and it's bad. It's five, you know, five people on the oars are better than four. So, you know, yeah. that was the reason why I I brought it up. So. Um, any other thoughts on this before we move on to minutes? Okay. Um, so we have three sets of minutes. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, move to approve the minutes of January 30th, 2018, as amended. Okay. Now, you, can, you know, you can't. I was going to say, I'll Although you were at all these meetings. You I just, was. You, you but I'll abstain yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. You don't have to. But you can. Um, let's see. I don't think I had anything on I, I, yeah. I mean, I could have added stuff on yeah. the 30th, but. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's such a long, it was such a long yeah. meeting. Caitlin, how did you take four <laughs> hours and put it on two pages? Yeah. That's what I imagine. For the 30th? Yeah. Oh, which one was that? Oh, oh I didn't really summarize the presentation yeah. part. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I felt like everyone's when, heard that. I mostly just did comments, yeah. like, afterwards. Right. We're not complaining. Because that would be in the uh, packet record online if they want to look at it. Yeah. yeah. Yep, the presentations, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, good, good job. Any, uh, <laughs> any comments on that? I think I found a typo, but I, of course I can't find it right. anymore. Well, you know what, it'll if be you find it, let it'll me be, know. It'll be memorialized. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can make my um, comments. All in favor? 3 0. 3 0. Technically, that is the correct call of the vote. Okay. Okay. Move to approve the minutes of February 13th, 2018, as amended. Wait a second. I cannot vote on this one. I was not there. Okay. Oh. oh. So we can't vote. So by the rule of necessity, yeah, you can all vote. That's another we kind of all vote. Yeah. I watched the yeah, video. That's more, more actually if you have a conflict. That's actually, you don't even need that rule. You, don't you can it. always vote at a meeting you were at, not at, which yeah, you I can. never understood. But you can. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You were well, sitting I, here. It's I just great. learned something, okay? So there's always <laughs> learning that's going on. I watched the entire video. <laughs> and you earn more than a time. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, yeah, come on. But I don't. I don't have any. All right. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Well, comments. I'm, right. You're going to make me vote on this, aren't you? I'm not going to do anything. We, we, do what you like. Do we? I mean, can we not get them into the record unless I vote? Right. It's not really better to prove the board them. Approves them okay. they come it's, it's, it's almost six weeks now. Okay, so got it. Do it. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Three zero. Very good. Move to approve the minutes, February 27th, 2018, as amended. Do I have a second? I'll second them. I did. I'll second. I had had uh, word. Um, I need to learn to do the notes in in PDF files. Um, but I think 
there's there was a misunderstanding about the question that I was asking regarding the email from the town council's office. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, and I'm just trying to find that where where that is. Um, I'm not sure if I can help it. Yeah, please. Maybe if we blew it up, we'd find it easier. Sorry. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Right there. Um, so, climate advisory committee. Um, oh, so Mr. Freeman then asked about this open meeting letter that was sent to the board. So, oh, here it is. Uh, it's a pretty simple fix. Okay. Um, it, the, it is Mr. Freeman then asked about uh, this open meeting letter slash email because it was an email letter. Okay. I guess um, that was sent. It's, this is on 6C2, two? Two. Okay. Uh, top of the page, uh, um, in, in my liaison report. Okay. It, I think it's an easy fix. Mr. Freeman had asked about this. Oh, letter, email, slash email. Letter, slash email. That was sent by, uh, what is it, uh, town council or town council's firm or whatever. Council. It wasn't sent by us. Okay. Um, which was my question. Yeah. Okay, sent by town council. Thanks, Kate. Okay. That's it. So, okay. okay. Um, in favor of uh, limits as a as amended. All in favor? Opposed? Zero. Three zero. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Before. Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, just a quick update. I'm, I apologize for my distraction once in a while, but there was a home with significant damage on Berkeley Street. Oh, sorry. Uh, fire damage. That's uh, I'm street. very happy to report the residents and firefighters are all safe. Mm -hmm. um, further, the residents do have a place to stay in the meanwhile, but a home was seriously damaged. Uh, the fire department will be there overnight on a fire watch. There's a strong possibility it could be reignited. Oh, uh, boy. So that's not far from where you No, it's, that's probably, yeah. I, I go down but, the street to get home. You know, everyone is safe, safe. most importantly. Okay. Well, that's good to Thank know. You. Well, you know, first responders, are great. Yeah. Okay, motion to, do I entertain a motion to adjourn? I'll make said motion. Second. Second. Okay, no discussion. All those in favor? 4 0. We are adjourned at 918. Yep. I missed by three minutes. Mm. So